people, I'm Jabby Kuwait. Joining us is Nina Story. We just watched the react the reaction. We watched our own reaction. Mm -hmm. We watched the trailer to Blade Runner 2049. And if you want to see our reaction, there's a link in the description below. You can click on it and then come back and watch this one. This is just gonna be our discussion video. Thank you for joining us. Welcome back if you've watched the reaction already. I liked that trailer a lot, and I love that director. I watched another film of his called The Arrival. Oh god, I loved that movie. Yeah, it was amazing. It was my favorite movie from 2016. Yeah. Absolutely favorite. Yeah. And so I am very excited to see what he does with Blade Runner. I like that Harrison Ford is such a strong component of the film. I thought that he was just gonna be this kind of weird ancillary character that showed up for a hot second and disappeared. Um, like a magic trick, but no, he's there. Like he's a really important part of the movie. Yeah, it seems that way. I feel bad I never saw the original. I've seen clips of it throughout I, the whole thing. I saw the original as a kid. Yeah. Fun fact, the movie wasn't actually that well received at the time. Really? Yeah, I mean, it may have been critically acclaimed. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, for years. People did not want to see that movie because it was the first time the future was being portrayed in such a bleak way. Oh. Like the movie opens up on Los Angeles, yeah. the future, yeah. and it's like totally flames and it's just like hell. I just remember seeing parts of it and, and not quite connecting with it. I watched it several times as a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't watched all the versions. I do intend to before the movie's out. So that's gonna be quite an undertaking. Uh, because I'm gonna buy a Blu-ray or something with all the versions, because they have like the final cut, they have the original right. theatrical cut, they have the director's cut, this, that, and the third, and um, you know, the uh, random audience member's cut. I was thinking about all the piles of stuff in that shot. Oh, and I was garbage. just- I think that's great, because this is this is indicating you know where the future could go, where uh -huh. you've got the super advanced technology, and it's the dichotomy of like, there's that, and then, Garbage world. Right, the people who have access it. to it. You know, when you're in a dystopian future, it's, again, it's access to resources right. and, and how that that gap becomes wider and wider. My frame of reference is limited with the other one, but I feel this seems like you can connect with it more in terms of the narrative of what's happening, but it's also, you know, part of the trailer. I also loved that. That is so unfair to the original. <laughs> you didn't even watch the whole thing. I probably did parts. <laughs> parts. But, like this, but, this well, trailer but I feel looks like, like I can connect no, with no, it so no, much but better. My point is, is in, in the original from what I saw, I remember feeling like there, it, it had more of an art house feel to it. Sure. This to me feels a little more mainstream, but also I, I, I do appreciate the fact that musically, like the score, like tone wise and instrumentation wise feels very similar mm -hmm. to to the original which mm -hmm. is it's great you know that they didn't deviate from that in terms of it's got this droney kind of there's like this constant tension that you feel mm -hmm. um it, it, there's never like a release that happens you know you're hanging out with a musician when they break down the music <laughs> in very specific <laughs> words i do like that this is kind of an expression of where we could end up going yeah you know in our, within our lifetime, like this could very well happen. I'm sure they even did some research to see what is possible for you know our future, the world's future. That's what they did for Minority Report. They mm -hmm. they got these people together to make a, a think tank to go. Okay, what is realistically where the world could be in 50 years? Um, and that's what Minority Report was based on. Those ideas, those concepts of realistic projections. And so that very well could be the same here. Either way, it looks Probably. like either at the very least, this looks like a supremely entertaining film. It doesn't feel like the same kind of crazy stuff that we have been getting a lot these days. It feels like more kind of honed in on the story and characters and having it be more about the story than the action. So it's a story with good action as opposed to being an action story, action movie with like some story in there. You know, and also too, like I'm always fascinated with science fiction films that take the time to kind of delve into like the everyday minutia and how that like what's happening, even from this trailer, you can see they, they refer to like just how their daily lives are and, and how oppressive and difficult that is. And, and I, it, I feel like that's an interesting way to connect because you're like, oh God, that's what it takes just for them to, you know, eat or, or to, you know, just survive sure. or so. And I feel like you get a sense of that. Watching this. On a completely unrelated, but sort of related note, this is what was told to me. I have, I have not verified this information, but apparently like, for everything we consume in our in, in the states, for everything we consume, it takes like 49, 50 Chinese people to keep up with all that, right? And what's happening in China is their economy is their the, the there's lower classes rising, mm. and if they rise to middle class, that's gonna kind of mess up everybody else's routine essentially. So it's gonna be harder for us to get food at the regular rate that we do. It's harder for us to get stuff at the regular rate that we do. Like iPhones are as cheap as they are because they hire, you know lower paid workers in China. And so 
like you're saying, like it, 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 things are gonna shift dramatically where it's gonna be harder to get food quite as easily as we do now. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna be as easily accessible like we have it today. Like this is the life of luxury we're living right now mm -hmm. compared to what it's gonna be, in, you know. Sure, unless we all come up together and we help each other. <laughs> <laughs> Never gonna that's happen. How I feel in my heart. <laughs> yeah. As soon as the Chinese come up, they're gonna be like, "Hi, you fucking Americans! Can't do anything for yourselves. Can't even make an iPhone. You need us to do it. You suck." It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> I'm half Asian, so that's what I'm gonna be like. Ha! Okay, I'm on this side now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, you guys. Before I say any more dumb jokes, I'm gonna conclude this video. If you'd like to get a T-shirt with my face or things I say on it, then uh, please check out the Teespring. Uh, link in the description below for some jamazing swag, is what it's called. And uh, check out Nina's story on the social media. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out other reactions, reviews, short films, and video game related videos. Thanks so much for hanging out. I'm Jabby Kawai. This is Nina's story. Peace out.